life begins with a dividing cell. Some cells stop dividing before we are born. Others, like those in the skin, continue to divide. Throughout Pam's life, they've multiplied, replacing damaged cells with new ones. But not forever. It's as if they have a built-in clock. In a pathology lab in Wales, Dr David Kipling has cultured some skin samples, donated by Emma and Pam. So here we have some of Pam's cells growing in culture. And what you can see here is a big senescent cell at the end of its life. In fact, next to it, there's a nice example of a, of a young, still growing cell. Here are some young cells all next to each other, which are probably daughters from the same cell. But yet, even in this field of view, we can see in the corner um, a senescent cell, even in the same field. And here we've got an example of what the young cells are able to do, but the senescent cells can't, which is undergo cell division. So we've managed to capture a cell here, which is right in the very last stages of cell division, as these two round balls uh, undergoing cytokinesis and separating into two daughter cells. Pam has not got to the end of her cellular lifespan. She's just used up some of the cell division's clocks. So in her sample, there's plenty of growing and vigorous cells. All that we know now is that there are less divisions available over the, the coming years than what we would find in Emma. Human skin cells can only divide a pre-programmed number of times. As they do so, you can see dark bands, the chromosomes separating out. And here lies the secret of the cellular clock. Chromosomes are linear pieces of DNA and they have ends to them. Telomeres are the bits of DNA at the very ends of the chromosomes and they protect the ends of the chromosomes. They're a bit like the little plastic bits at the end of shoelaces. They act almost like a sort of genetic protector. They stop the ends of the chromosome fraying and sticking to other chromosomes. One of the important things about telomeres is that every time a cell divides, the cell can't manage to copy the very end of the chromosome and it loses a little bit of this so-called telomeric DNA. Every time the cell divides, the telomere gets shorter. Eventually, it shortens to a critical length. The next time the cell divides, the telomere can no longer protect the fraying DNA and the cell becomes senescent. Revealing the difference between Pam and Emma's telomeres calls for another gel separation. The smaller the telomeres are, the faster they will migrate through the gel. We can detect the telomeres after that and see their relative lengths. So what we're seeing here are Pam's telomeres and Emma's telomeres. Because Pam's are shorter, they've moved further into the gel, whereas Emma's are longer and they haven't moved as far. Fine. But Pam shouldn't be downhearted about cellular ageing. It could have been this that has enabled her to stay beautiful. This clock is very important. It didn't evolve to ages. It evolved in the first place to stop us getting cancer. So cellular ageing may simply have evolved as a side effect. It may not be inevitable, just the result of one of nature's trade-offs, protecting Pam from cancer at an earlier age. Thank <laughs> you.